This little relic from the toy cupboard is a late 1950s Cooper Monaco, which was from an era of sports racing cars which were hugely successful. There was the Lotus 23, there were a number of them that operated both in Europe and in Can-Am in the United States. They didn't really breed any kind of road cars of the time. They were merely race cars that were very efficient. In the meantime, there have been kit car manufacturers and specialists who have created cars for the racing enthusiast. But again, they were not road cars, albeit they were sometimes used on the road. Now, however, they have actually developed a series of cars which are being offered to us, apparently for road work, but which are based on this original model design. The Caterham 21, which as yet I've not driven, seems to be one. The Lotus Elise is certainly an entirely fashionable item, which I have tested, which is fun and very light and flawed. And there is the Renault. And here we've got the Renault Spider, which is their offering for this apparent model market. According to Renault, there are going to be 200 of these available in England and about 80 of them a year. It's a very pretty car. It has the sexy gullwing doors, which certainly make parking close possible. It has stunning good looks. The back end of this thing causes attention wherever you go. And the seating and the cockpit, the cockpit is big. It is very wide. The seats are a caro, which are the sort of thing that any enthusiast tries to save up for for their car. It is definitely a boulevard puller. It's the sort of car you want in the sunshine and it's the sort of car you want to be noticed in. And that is certainly what you will achieve. It is a fashion statement. On the other hand, this car is hardly worth the space it's parked on if you want comfort. There is no hood. There is an optional umbrella which apparently will allow you to travel at 20 miles an hour. But on a rainy day like today, you are sunk. There is no heater. There are no sun visors. There's absolutely nothing that your average poser is going to want to enjoy. More especially, there is very little stowage. The space you see here in the front, actually it looks better because we've taken a plastic briefcase with all the tools out so that we can put our own things in. It is not really a very useful car for anybody. If on the other hand, your love affair is with racing and you want to put these kind of clothes on and compete as an amateur, then a car like this seems screamingly obvious because it does have all the technology that Renault have found out of the race circuits. It has a two litre engine, which is basically the Renault Clio Williams. It gives you enormous amount of power in a very simple structure with rigid framework and an aluminium tub, which is they spent four years creating. It was called the Mosaic Project and they believe that they have found an incredibly strong structure, which certainly when you're driving it is rigid. You have the rollover bar, you have all the equipment you seem to want if you're going to drive to a circuit, get on the grid, race, and then drive home without a trailer or an escort car. And yet you can't, because if you want to compete, you have to have another Renault, a sports one that is specifically constructed for racing, so this car really seems to be a total waste of space until you drive it. Renault's pretty good at marketing. The Papa and Nicole is something we're all familiar with and we in the media are even sent postcards from her when they're going to do another campaign. With the Spider, they themselves admit they're not sure who it's for. And so the sort of images they've been presenting to us are wildly romantic and bear nothing to the reality of trying to live with this car under mixed weather conditions and mixed traffic conditions. 
The cockpit's pretty sparse, as you'd expect, and indeed pretty trendy. You have just one button you can play with, which is this one, which gives you a heated front screen. That is actually all they've got to offer you. The central controls are what you'd want, They're just the oil, the temperature, and a rev gauge. And in the center, you do have a speedo and some kind of a fuel gauge. I haven't actually found a mileometer, although they lay claim to one. And indeed, in the initial brochures, they talked about having a heater, which I also can't find. It's hard to decide really what to make of this car because actually, as a driver's machine, it is splendid. But the problem is, there's no way it's any use to you. It probably would work as a third car, as a toy. But at £26,500, there are an awful lot of enormously fun cars to drive. And they do have a roof, and they do really have this level of performance. So that it isn't the exclusive preserve of Renault that you can accelerate like this, or that it'll stop, or that it'll look that good. If you go out there in the market, there are a lot of cars for that money, and I'm not sure this one's really worth it.